Business is an infinite game, and when you play with a finite mindset, lots of people suffer, including the companies that they themselves are trying to build. That's the great irony. We've all heard the whispers, the elusive secrets to achieving unimaginable wealth. But is there truly a formula for becoming a billionaire? Hi, business minds and financial enthusiasts. Welcome back again to Business Mind Talks. Today, we dive into the mind of Simon Sinek, a thought leader who challenges the conventional path to success and explore his unique perspective on building billion-dollar empires. Um, your why is something objective. It's who you are. It's who you are at your natural best. So I lost my passion for my own work, um, which was embarrassing because superficially my life was pretty good. I owned my own small business. We had good clients. We did good work. Um, but I didn't want to wake up and go to work anymore. Um, and so I kept that to myself. And so all of my energy went into pretending that I was happier, more successful, and more in control than I felt, which was pretty draining, to be honest. Um, Money is a tool, a byproduct of a life lived with purpose. Don't chase the money, chase the why. When your passion meets a genuine need, when your cause resonates with others, the potential for financial success becomes limitless. Well, I can tell you a fun way, it's, uh, some of you may know about it, it's called the friends exercise, uh, which is really fun, which is go to a friend who you love and who loves you. Um, um, the kind of friend that if you called them at three o'clock in the morning, you know they would take your call, and if they called you, you would absolutely be there for them. Do not do this with um, a sibling, do not do this with a parent, and do not do this with a spouse. It doesn't work. Because um, they think they know you. Um, no, go to a friend, a friend and, and who, who you love and ask them this very simple question. Why are we friends? And they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Because you're asking them to put into words a feeling and the part of the brain that controls our emotions doesn't control language so we struggle and ironically you actually stop asking the question why because the question why elicits emotional responses and you convert to a rational question come on you'll say what specifically is it about me that I know that you would be there for me no matter what and they will struggle and they will hem and haw and they go oh, I don't know and they'll start describing you uh, you're trustworthy, you're funny, um, you're always there for me, and you have to play devil's advocate. And you go, great, that's the definition of a friend. What specifically is it about me that I, I know you'd be there for me no matter what? And they're going to go through a few rounds of this. You cannot help them, you cannot let anybody else help them, you have to let them go through the stress. And eventually, after a bunch of rounds, they will give up and they will stop describing you and they will start talking about themselves. And my friends said to me, Simon, I don't know. All I know is I don't even have to talk to you. I can just sit in a room with you and I feel inspired. And I got goosebumps. In fact, I'm getting them right now. And uh, that's because they put into words something that is deep inside of me. And you will, you know you've, you're, you're, you're there when you have the emotional response to what they're describing about themselves. You will well up, you will have goosebumps, something will happen. And if you do this with multiple friends, you will get similar, if not the exact same answer, because the thing you give to the world, your why, is the reason they love you. It's the thing they want in their life that fills that missing gap that they don't have, which is why we're not friends with everyone. So it's a wonderful, wonderful way to, to find your why. Remember, your why isn't just yours. It's a beacon that attracts like-minded individuals, forming a powerful synergy that propels everyone forward. In this circle of why, you'll find inspiration, support, and accountability, the essential ingredients for building a billion-dollar dream. Now, before we continue unraveling the secrets of financial success, I want to share an exciting opportunity with you. If you're eager to implement these financial success strategies into your own life, consider checking out our exclusive online courses. The Cashflow Academia. 
designed to empower you on your journey to wealth creation. These courses provide step-by-step -step guidance, practical tips, and real-world applications. Elevate your financial IQ and start building your path to success today. Check the link in the description for more details, and enroll now. Let's continue unlocking the secrets to financial success. The, the reality about somebody who learns to adopt an infinite mindset, like any mindset, it's, it's a practice, right? Like mindfulness, it's a practice. Somebody who learns to adopt an infinite mindset, infinite-minded uh, folks, um, they view, um, let me do it the other way around first, finite-minded uh, folks, finite-minded leaders, are afraid or threatened by uncertainty. They don't like surprises, and they like to exert a lot of control over a situation, which is why we tend to see them operate in very short time frames, quarters and years, because we have a lot of control over how numbers will work out over a quarter of a year, right? Um, five years, 10 years, much more difficult, right? And so in order to exert control and avoid surprises, we try and maintain all control over the plan, right? Infinite-minded view, view uh, opportunity in surprises. They love uncertainty. They think uncertainty opens up the door to them, where finite-minded leaders think uncertainty is a horrible thing, a thing to avoid. The thing that, uh, uh, where, where finite-minded leaders find the feeling of safety in the rules, infinite-minded leaders find safety in relationships. So when you, you can tell when your organization is too finite-minded when you have too much bureaucracy, because bureaucrats like to enforce the rules the way they're written, right? Because that's where they find safety. As long as I, uh, I follow the rules, my job is safe. I follow the rules, right? As opposed to spending the time to build trust. So number one, uh, you, the question is, if you have a very clear sense of just cause, it actually becomes obvious. Right? It's not actually a big decision. In fact, we call it existential because to the person who makes the flex, it's a death sentence that they don't change. But to the outside world, they think you're crazy. Why would you trade the certainty of this business for the uncertainty of that business? You've got a good thing going. One of the funny examples is Blockbuster. Blockbuster used to be the 800-pound gorilla. They were the only significant national player for video and DVD rentals back in the day. And this little company showed up called Netflix. Right? And they had, a, they, they had a different business model. It was subscription. And you remember that they would send us the DVDs, right? And streaming technology wasn't good enough yet, but we could see it was coming eventually. And the CEO of Blockbuster went to the board because he could see where the technology was going, right? And he said to Blockbuster, you know, we should probably look at the subscription model. And the board would not allow him to embrace subscription models because the company made 12% of its revenues from late fees. Blockbuster does not exist anymore and Netflix has completely reinvented television, right? The point is, they had no cause, so they couldn't see anything. They could only see a few feet in front of them. So if you can only see a few feet, few feet in front of you, and at those are the discussions you're having at, at the table, about what we're giving up and why would we give up the certainty of this, the odds are you're looking down and you're not looking up. So you have to have that just cause. What are we working to advance that's bigger than ourselves? And yes, of course there are always finite games within the infinite, but there's a context now. Why is it that Apple, a computer company, invented iTunes and not the music industry? Why is it that Amazon invented itself and the e-reader, the Kindle, and not the publishing industry? Why is it that Netflix pioneered the, their business model and not the television and movie industry? It's because those industries, all of those players were so busy competing against each other and protecting the business model that they knew so well, now they're playing defense. Now they're forced to change, which is not existential flexibility. That's defense. That's, that's gripping for your life, right? As opposed to new companies that aren't even in, aren't even in your industry. Remember, in the infinite game, you don't know all the players. And sometimes the players will be completely outside your industry that will eat you lunch and put you out of business. You have to have that just cause if it becomes obvious. Don't get caught up in the short-term game of numbers and rankings. The true billionaire mentality is about playing the infinite game. A game where the score isn't kept in dollars, but in the lives you touch, the problems you solve, and the legacy you leave behind.
Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more video update.